to serve man, where aliens came and they helped us grow crops and they gave us secrets to our energy needs and they, there was peace all over the earth and they invited us to go back and visit them. Humans have wanted to study space for centuries now. What started off with ancient astronomers just theorizing about space spiraled into so many different fields of study, including actual space exploration. We've been exploring space one step at a time since 1957. And with each discovery comes truths that we never even saw coming. Most of these truths sounded absolutely outrageous at first, but with deeper studies, things become a lot clearer. And well, we might just be on the cusp of one of these unbelievable truths. NASA just detected an extraterrestrial object 50 times bigger than the Earth, and this discovery is bringing the reality of space directly to us. It was not just some orbiting spacecraft, it was a hollowed out intercontinental ballistic missile where they took out the warhead and put in a radio transmitter. The military knew this, that's what founded NASA. Join us as we unravel the mystery behind the object that was found and what this means for our very reality. The International Space Station is a joint project that was set up by multiple space agencies from around the world, including NASA from the United States, Roscosmos from Russia, the European Space Agency, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. It represents one of the most significant international collaborations in the field of space exploration and also means that no one country has too much control over it. Think of it as a neutral ground in space. The station itself is huge. It measures 357 feet long, which is about the length of an American football field. The pressurized sections of the ISS have a length of 218 feet, providing a total habitable volume of approximately 13,696 cubic feet. The ISS has a mass of nearly 1 million pounds, it orbits Earth at an average altitude of 227 nautical miles above the Earth's surface. The modular structure has been continuously inhabited since November 2000. It orbits the Earth approximately every 90 minutes, traveling at a speed of about 17,500 miles per hour. So, it's got more than enough chances throughout the day to get a good look all the way around the Earth. This space station provides a unique and controlled environment for conducting scientific research and technological experiments in space. Scientists and engineers can study the effects of microgravity on various materials, organisms, and human health. It also serves as a platform for testing new technologies that may be used in future space MIS science, including those aiming to explore other celestial bodies like the Moon and Mars without actually going there to get it all done. Do you know how? Well, the ISS is equipped with several cameras that serve different purposes, both for scientific research and operational needs. These cameras capture stunning views of the Earth from space. The images are not only aesthetically pleasing, but also valuable for studying the planet's climate, weather patterns, and geographical changes over time. Earth observation from the ISS contributes to our understanding of environmental changes and supports disaster monitoring and response efforts. That's because many of the scientific experiments conducted on the ISS require continuous monitoring. Cameras are used to record experiments, observe reactions, and gather data that just can't be easily replicated in a laboratory on Earth. Cameras are mounted on the exterior of the ISS to document spacewalks and other activities performed outside the station. These cameras not only provide live views of spacewalks but also record valuable footage for post-mission analysis and training purposes. And the best part here is that these cameras also have a live feed that you can watch from the Earth. Everything that's going on in our atmosphere is clearly visible on these cameras. And well, that's also where the craziest discoveries take place. One of NASA's live feeds from the ISS went viral. Viewers noticed an intriguing moment. In the background of the video, an unidentified object appeared. It's important to note that the object's nature, origin, and identity was not immediately obvious from the footage. It was nothing like anything we'd seen before, which is also why everyone noticed it so fast, but we weren't the only ones. As the unidentified object came into view on the live feed, the video feed was abruptly interrupted and cut off. This sudden interruption immediately caused quite an uproar on Earth. 
Some people believe that NASA deliberately cut the feed to hide the presence of an unidentified flying object that had entered the ISS's field of view, and the rumor spread all over the world. People were convinced that this wasn't any average footage and that it was definitely something to do with extraterrestrials because normally, NASA doesn't just cut footage out of nowhere. But that's where things get even weirder. Representatives from NASA immediately tried to get ahead of the situation, as it was clear that things were kind of spiraling out of control. They said that the live feed wasn't cut intentionally and that there was a technical difficulty. A little too convenient for a technical difficulty to take place, isn't it? That's what everyone was thinking about. Because when the feed popped back up shortly after, that strange UFO was gone. NASA kept with the story of them not having anything to do with it at all, and that the object could have been anything, space junk most likely, and that it's just luck that we only saw it appear on the feed and didn't see it disappear. From what we can gather from the seconds-long footage of the object, though, it's very far away and could potentially be massive, maybe even 50 times bigger than the Earth itself. So how could an object this massive just disappear like that? Or is NASA lying to us? What's weirder is that this exact thing has happened before, too. In 1996, during the STS-77 space shuttle missions, astronaut Mario Runko filmed a mysterious object while on a spacewalk in low Earth orbit. The object was part of an experimental satellite deployment known as the Passive Aerodynamically Stabilized Magnetically Damped Satellite Test Unit. The test unit was designed to test a new approach to satellite maneuverability using the Earth's magnetic field instead of thrusters. The footage, which recently resurfaced on YouTube and sparked speculation about extraterrestrial life, shows the spinning PAM stew in grainy, low-light enhanced black and white and the satellite's two Stimsonite reflectors, similar to those used on road and bicycle reflectors, caught the ambient light, creating a bright spot as the satellite turned head-on. From the video, though, things looked particularly interesting. It didn't look like just another satellite. It looked a lot more like a UFO. Runko explained that the lights moving in the background were likely either isolated lights on the ground or stars. He believes the object in question was simply the Pam stew itself, and there was no mention of any extraterrestrial or unidentified objects during the audio recording. Or maybe that information was kept from us. And you know what? It doesn't even end here. The STS-75 missions, launched in February 1996, was a space shuttle mission conducted by NASA's Columbia Orbiter. During this mission, a notable incident occurred involving a tethered satellite known as the Tethered Satellite System. The Tethered Satellite System was a scientific experiment designed to study the behavior of plasma in the Earth's ionosphere. It consisted of a satellite connected to the space shuttle by a conducting tether approximately 8 miles in length. The satellite was deployed into space and the tether was then extended to its full length so it could remain in a stable orbit while connected to the shuttle. But during the tether deployment, a mechanical failure happened and the tether unexpectedly broke loose, drifting away from the shuttle. Because of this incident, the entire experiment had to be terminated since the satellite was no longer controllable. Done and dusted? Not quite. After the incident, Video footage captured by the Space Shuttle's cameras showed a large number of small, bright objects floating around the drifting tether. Some experts began claiming that these objects were unidentified flying objects or extraterrestrial spacecraft swarming around the satellite. NASA, on the other hand, offered a different explanation. According to the Space Agency, the objects seen in the video were most likely ice particles or small pieces of debris floating near the shuttle. These particles could be seen because of the sun's reflection, and they appeared as bright points of light in the camera's field of view. NASA's explanation is consistent with other instances where ice particles or debris have been mistaken for UFOs in space footage. In the vacuum of space, small particles can become visible when they catch sunlight, and their appearance can sometimes be misinterpreted. But here's the thing, all of this information does come from NASA itself. So if they are trying to hide something, this is exactly the story they'd use. At the same time though, it's not necessary that NASA is lying to us. It's also possible that they're in the dark about the true origins of the strange discoveries, just like we are, and are trying to figure out what's going on themselves. This might sound a little strange, but even though we think that NASA always has all the answers, it doesn't really. There are times amateur astronomers have beat NASA to the discovery too, just like how in 2012, 
amateur astronomers found unusual clouds or plumes along the western limb of Mars in the southern hemisphere. These plumes were a lot different from typical Martian clouds and caught everyone's attention because of their extremely unexpected behavior. The plumes were rising to altitudes exceeding over 100 miles, significantly higher than similar features seen in the past on the Red Planet. These structures persisted for several days before disappearing, only to reappear weeks later. The phenomenon developed rapidly, forming in less than 10 hours, and covered an extensive area, approximately 300 miles. The plumes remained visible for around 10 days, and their structure changed from day to day. The intriguing aspect of these high-altitude plumes was that they were challenging to explain using existing models of the Martian atmosphere. Scientists ended up thinking about several potential explanations, but none of them perfectly aligned with the characteristics. One hypothesis suggested that the plumes could be caused by Martian auroras, which are analogous to Earth's northern and southern lights. Auroras are brilliant light displays caused by the interaction of charged particles from the solar wind with a planet's magnetic field. But this explanation didn't seem to work out outside of the theories. Another possibility was that the plumes were composed of water ice, carbon dioxide ice, or dust, as they seemed to reflect sunlight. However, clouds made of these materials would also be difficult to explain based on our current understanding of the Martian atmosphere and climatic conditions. Despite extensive observations and analysis, the exact cause and nature of these mysterious plumes on Mars remained hidden. And at the end of it all, there were simply more questions than answers. But perhaps the one that's been the biggest question NASA ever had to face in recent years would have to be the question of Oumuamua. Oumuamua was discovered on October 19, 2017, by astronomers using the PanSTARRS-1 telescope at the University of Hawaii's Institute for Astronomy. The telescope is part of the Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System, designed to scan the skies and detect transient objects like asteroids and comets. And it did just that. The name Oumuamua was chosen to reflect the object's interstellar nature and its status as the first known interstellar object to pass through our solar system. The name comes from the Hawaiian language where au means reach out for and mua means first. From the observations, astronomers determined that Oumuamua was an elongated object, tumbling as it moved through space. Its brightness varied significantly over time, indicating that it had an elongated and uneven shape. The light curve, which is a slight brightness variation, suggested that the object's dimensions were about half a mile long and approximately about 260 feet wide. Oumuamua was also traveling at an incredibly high speed relative to the sun. Its velocity was estimated to be about 196,000 miles per hour. This high speed was a clear indication that it came from outside our solar system. Because nothing that originates inside the solar system could have been traveling this fast the way this particular object was. After careful mapping of its trajectory, scientists were able to figure out that the object entered our solar system from the general direction of the constellation Lyra, but it was already on its way out of the solar system when it was discovered. That's not because NASA is too slow, it's simply because the Oumuamua was way too fast. To calculate Oumuamua's distance from Earth, Astronomers use the parallax effect. The apparent position of the object against the background stars slightly shifts as Earth orbits the Sun. By observing this shift from different locations on Earth, astronomers were able to triangulate its distance from Earth and realize that our planet wasn't in danger of impact, but that didn't mean that they were done studying it. This was still an extremely strange object and scientists needed answers. And so did the general public who was, at this point, very invested in what was going on. With the positional data and distance all figured out, astronomers calculated Oumuamua's orbital elements, which describe the shape and orientation of its hyperbolic trajectory. This includes parameters like semi-major axis, eccentricity, inclination, and argument of periapsis. From these elements, they derived the object's heliocentric velocity, which indicates how fast it was moving relative to the Sun. By analyzing the orbital elements and velocity, astronomers determined that Oumuamua's trajectory was hyperbolic. A hyperbolic orbit is an open, unbound trajectory that signifies an object is on a one-time journey through the solar system and will eventually leave, never to return. But that brought with it another question. If Oumuamua is from outside of the solar system, and because of its shape, it's clearly not a space rock, there's something else going on here. 
The main debate about Oumuamua's composition centered on whether it displayed characteristics more typical of an asteroid or a comet. Asteroids are rocky and metallic bodies found predominantly in the inner solar system, while comets are icy bodies that originate from the outer solar system or even farther in the distant reaches of space. When Oumuamua was first observed, its appearance and behavior seemed to align more closely with that of an asteroid. But what caught everyone's attention was Oumuamua's unexplained non-gravitational acceleration. This acceleration, measured as it moved away from the sun, indicated that some force beyond gravity was acting on the object. A non-gravitational acceleration like this is commonly observed in comets but not in asteroids. One possible explanation for this non-gravitational acceleration was the outgassing phenomenon. When a comet approaches the sun, the solar heat causes the volatile ice on its surface to vaporize and release gas and dust particles into space. This outgassing generates a gentle thrust, which can alter the comet's trajectory slightly and result in non-gravitational acceleration. This behavior is responsible for the development of a coma and tail characteristic of comets. Given that Oumuamua did not exhibit a visible coma or tail, the idea of outgassing was considered unusual for an asteroid-like object. Yet, it offered a plausible explanation for the observed non-gravitational acceleration. Scientists speculated that if Oumuamua had a dark or inactive surface that did not produce a visible coma, it could still experience outgassing, albeit at a level that was just difficult to detect from Earth. Oumuamua's high speed was a major factor that contributed to its brief passage through our solar system, traveling at an incredible velocity of about 196,000 miles per hour relative to the Sun. The interstellar object quickly made its way through the solar system. The limited observation time was a consequence of Oumuamua's fast movement. Astronomers detected it on October 19, 2017, and within a few weeks. It had already passed its closest point to the Sun and was heading back out into interstellar space. By early 2018, it had moved beyond the range of our telescopes, becoming too faint and distant to be effectively observed. The short observation window presented significant challenges for studying Oumuamua in detail. Astronomers had only a few weeks to gather data and make observations before it became too faint to be detectable with available instruments. During this time, Various observatories and telescopes worldwide focused their efforts on gathering as much information as possible. But even with all of that technology and manpower, no one was really able to figure out how that massive object made its way all the way through the solar system, the way it did, and then back out all while giving us no time to really study it, unless it was being driven to do what it did. You see, not only was Oumuamua a totally unique shape, and the materials were just too strange for it to be a hunk of rock. The trajectory is simply too strange for it to be a naturally occurring object. This has led many to believe that it wasn't just a rock, but a spacecraft that was being flown by an alien. The theory here goes as far as to suggest that it's possible that aliens have been using space rock looking objects for years now to come as close as they can to the Earth to study humans and our behaviors before going back to where they came from. But as far as NASA goes, Oumuamua was once again nothing more than a naturally made object that just looked a little too strange but had nothing off about it. What do you think though? Do you believe what they claim? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.